you know, I don't have any set hobbies like I'm getting into exercising, you know, trying to keep myself fit, you know, for the next 80 years, I hope. And I want to uh, grasp more of uh, the New York uh, concept of life because I feel if you can make it in the capital of the world, you can make it anywhere in the world. It was disco burning up the R&B charts. Many of Donny Hathaway's contemporaries had evolved to define the new dance sound of the era. But Donny himself had spent five years in obscurity fighting mental illness. Hungry for a comeback, Donny teamed up with an old friend. While he had a period of being dormant for a moment musically, he was working on his stuff. And he was reuniting with Roberta Flack and what I remember most is that they just did some of the best love songs of all time. They were about to do another. It was one song, and it appeared on Roberta Flack's record, Blue Lights in the Basement. It was a massive hit. It didn't take too long for me and for the DJs in the country and for the audience to understand that that song was the gem in that album. The closer I get to you, shot up to number two. Donny Hathaway was back. As far as I'm concerned, it never went away, you know. I mean, I, I, it may have been of a, a variations in his levels of success. You talk about the public acceptance. It's important, but that's not what your, your ability is based on. Now back in the spotlight, Donny returned to the studio immediately to record an entire record of duets with Flack. In January of 1979, Donnie traveled to New York to record vocals for the new songs, which included You Are My Heaven, co-written by Stevie Wonder and Eric Mercury. It was to be um, uh, an entire album of, of duets, which I thought was fabulous. Uh, Stevie and I wrote that, You Are My Heaven, which was, funnily enough, just the last song he re recorded. Donnie's illness robbed him of many things, but not his voice. When he sang, I like to say he had this stained glass voice. It was God inside him, and it was outside him. You could hear it. And he wasn't... I never believed that he was in control. Now, it's good that the recording session came off as well as it did. But there again, I say, um, you know, he shouldn't have been working, period. The vocals were solid, but Donnie's mental state was more fragile than anyone knew. Donnie had been ill. This particular night, he was singing, he sounded good, but at some point in the session, he screamed and ran out of the room. He was like huddled in a corner crying. And I said, Donnie, I said, brother, what, what's, what's up? He said, them two men, they're trying to kill me. I said, who? He said, white people. He said, they had my brain hooked up to a machine and they're stealing my music and my sound. He wasn't being himself. So this is hard. So um, I called the session off. The musicians left the studio. For Donnie, it was the last time. The phone was ringing. I answered the phone, and it was Roberta. She told me what had happened, which was, on, on so many levels, so shocking and so upsetting. Talk about the landscape of your whole life changing. Donnie Hathaway was found dead Early that morning, outside the Essex House Hotel, having jumped from his window, he was 34 years old. That was a Saturday night, uh, late Sunday morning. I got word. Um, I think the kids were sleeping. I didn't wake them up right then. Um, 
and I tried to put it in a scenario where they would not be, you know, shocked or, or uh, dismayed. I believe up until that time that Donnie had toyed with suicide but had never able to muster up the nerve to really do it. And this time, I believe what he did was he sat in the window and he closed his eyes and leaned back. Police ruled the death a suicide. Shockwaves ran through the music community. So hard to do. It was like surrealistic. I couldn't believe it, you know. And I don't know how he did it, you know. But it was, uh, it was something that pain really is still, still in my heart, you know. It was such a shock. The music industry stopped for a minute. I was in a recording studio four blocks from the Essex. Nobody could. Nobody could play. It broke my heart, I, you know, when I heard that. That just was oh, so awful. So awful. And then, you know, you had people speculating that he did this, he did that, do 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 do. I don't think no one, anyone knows for sure how it happened. When they first told me, I didn't think he committed suicide. I just didn't think it was a suicide thing. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe he fell out of the window. He would open up the window and stick his head out and vocalize. I would just like to think that he just fell. Over the years, various rumors have circulated that Donnie fell, or even that he was pushed from the window. That a man with so much talent at the peak of his success would take his own life is difficult to accept. However, the sad truth is that the leading cause of death among those who suffer from paranoid schizophrenia is suicide. There was some would focus so much on how he died, it, it didn't matter as much as what he had done in his life, how long his music would live beyond, beyond his life. Thank you. 